the great cricketer is a Twitter stream. It's about playing cricket at the grade level. Boys! Get a few today, did you? To be honest with you, I um, hate grade cricket. <laughs> uh, I went into to play for a team called... Um, the Obviously, sharing is always a big issue, a big issue for, for young kids coming into a senior cricket team. It's taken us like a win league. It's um, a bit of advice. So it's fine. Yeah. That's what I, I refer to the great cricketer here and I'll say, this will do a little bit early. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Grey Cricketer Podcast. On today's show, we are underway into the pandemic summer of 2020-2021 with Detail sponsorships, switch hit Smith runs and Australia's pursuit of 400. As long as India can get their overs in before Boxing Day, there's safety, 40 degree days in November, Warner's injury and races against time. England are in South Africa and Bairstow's runs are breaking TDC hearts as Darwin Milan dismisses hometown runs after abdication. The, the Thunder of WWW BBL champions New Zealand are winning against the West Indies and Cam Green's height is confirmed. Mark War is on the show to discuss Group 1 bloodlines, having great legs, teammates not being able to catch and keeping us here at TDC on time. Hashtag Ask TDC involves hating nice people, being called Big Fella and My Cricket's name changes. This episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. We can get all your Christmas gifts, your smugglers and all your accessories using the code CHAMP at checkout for free shipping. It's Budgie Smuggler. Dot com and Manscaped to offering yes. 20% off your purchase using the code TDC at checkout. You can also check out Patreon, patreon.com forward slash grey cricket for more exclusive content every single week. My name is Ian Higgins and I'm joined by Sam Perry. Pezzy lad, good afternoon, good evening and good night to you. Welcome well, to the summer of 2021. Thank you very much, mate. Wonderful to be here. The first day of summer as well today. Indeed it is. December 1. Indeed it is. You can't really feel it in the air in Melbourne because it's grey and raining. Rightfully Cheers. so. Uh, but we've just come, oh, uh, we, we, well, I take you everywhere I go, as you know, Pez, in my heart and in my mind, uh, from Sydney, where it was uh, 8,000 degrees in November. Mm-hmm. So that's normal. What were you doing there? Uh, I just went to a wedding, had a hell of a time, let me tell you. Um, but uh, enough about that. <laughs> Pez, I've got a question for you about uh, great cricket and seeing seeing well-known people succeed in great cricket. Let me yeah. tell you, so, you know, St Kilda this weekend just passed. Their top six included uh, DeMarcus Boogie Harris, Nick Maddinson, Pete Hanscom was playing for St Kilda as part of their top six. Uh, Chris Lynn hit 26s for Toomble on his way to 155 or some shit. Uh, there was also a story during the week about Harry Wilson, the, the, the current Wallaby, who scored a 35-ball ton in, 35 ball ton in school cricket. So I want to know, like, do we lo- when we see these names, these recognisable names, succeeding in the mm-hmm. in the relatable levels of cricket like we've played in the past? Um, do we prefer to see them fail? Or do we like seeing them succeed? Well, without doubt, we prefer to see them fail. Yep. It's always a dark day for clubbies when professional cricketers perform on the club scene, or in Harry Wilson's case, professional athletes. Like, yep. you know, I'm telling the listeners things they already know, but for the sake of just amplifying it and consolidating it, which yeah. is two things I like to do, as you know, he goes, they're my tattoos. Um, <laughs> you know, clubbies love to tell unsuspecting audiences, and they are often very unsuspecting, like your aunt at her 50th birthday or something like that. <laughs> Out of nowhere. That, uh, you know, there's only an infinitesimal difference between club cricket and state cricket or professional cricket, yeah. you know? Yeah. We're only a couple of scores away, et cetera, et cetera. We've mined this ground, uh, uh-huh. d- desperately so. Uh, and then someone like Chris Lynn comes in and he's fucking retired yeah. from representative cricket. He comes in, he hits 154 or 55 rocks, yeah. 26s. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it was in twos, to be fair. <laughs> the, the, you know, the pretense is devastatingly destroyed, you know? It, it, Mm. Now it seems like, you know, with the proliferation of uh, social and digital media everywhere, it seems mm-hmm. like, you know, people are covering club, club cricket a little bit more across the uh, mm. the Masters. I don't know if you've noticed that, but mm. it seems every day you wake up and someone is making a mockery of our treasured level. Yeah. You know, like like if it's not Lynn, it's Tom Batten last year just oh, mucking yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. in the backyard with yeah. eight-year-olds essentially. Yeah. Uh, and now you've got blokes from other sports Showing promise. Now, I looked at Harry Wilson's innings. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot made of it over here, especially up in Sydney and Brisbane, you know, the rugby union states. Yeah. And they had the footage of this 35-ball ton. Now, big, big body, Harry Wilson oh, at the time. Body. And he's and he's facing a couple of kids in year eight, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll Still got to get him. i see a few mechanics issues there. Do you? you know? Well, you know, as a, as a grade cricketer, I, yeah, I, I'm yeah, not yeah. sure if it have gone all the way. And, yeah. and then the other one, and we, we can't talk about this topic and other sports without mentioning the great code uh, of Aussie rules. Mm-hmm. 
Last week, Zach Merritt, who plays for Essendon, mm. uh, owned the sports pages here in Melbourne for a day or two, as he, as is his want. Yes. Uh, because he hit 152 for Cobden last week in some fucking comp or other. Right. That's you actually know, the, the name of the comp. Well, the headline, you know, Brad, he played Bradman-like cover drives, you know, screamed yeah. the headlines from particular places. Well, as we know, Bradman had a shit technique, though. That's a good point. Kind of leaned back a bit. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you could bend that front knee. Yeah. What if he bent that front knee? Also, could, you could barely knee? hit a six, that bloke. Yeah. So it's hard to know how to feel. St Kilda's top order there as well. Yeah, Harris, John O'Merlo, who plays for Victoria, is a right. good contract. Mattinson, three. Hanscom, four. Adam Crossweight, five. And Crossweight's the only guy there who doesn't have a Victoria contract. He got mm. the ton. The rest of them failed. Yeah. So that makes me feel better. Well, the top four failed. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, we sort of speak a lot about, you know, just how far away you actually are when you're playing great cricket, mm. you know, let alone if you're not playing first grade. And then you see these guys come in, you're just like, oh, no, this is actually – they're – they're toying with us. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like, it's like people have got fuck you money. They, these guys have got fuck you skill. Mm. It's just like, oh, you think you're a really good player. Like to be, to play first grade, for instance, you, like you have to be really good. That's a really good level of sport. It's not, it's not professional. Mm. That's, that's a really nice level. And then but when Lynn hits 150, it's kind like, of invalidates like, it a oh, little that's bit. junk. Yeah. I was talking to uh, a friend of mine uh, over the weekend who's a swimming coach and he, um, he actually used to coach, uh, Oh, that's what I can say. He used to coach James Magnuson. Right. And so he's um, he's coaching at the moment and he's got a couple of guys and he was saying like, um, he's got a couple of guys who he's coaching at the moment who are like top 10 and he's like, oh, look, they're probably not going to make the team. I, I, if they listen to this podcast, I'm just breaking some news to you yeah, that your yeah. coach reckon you ain't going to yeah. make it. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but it, I was just thinking like, these guys are top 10 swimmers in the country and he's saying like, well, to make the team, you've got to be top two. And I was like, do you know how fucking good you've got to be to be a swimmer, top 10 in the country? Yeah. And you're like... Don't bother. Yeah, <laughs> that's you're just miles away. Yeah. If, you, if you're not first, you're last. That's the thing in cricket, though, as well, isn't it? Like, it's not making the Australian eleven because you usually do a particular discipline. So, like, if you want to be a spinner, you have got to be the best spinner in yeah. the country. Yeah, you're, you're competing against other spinners. Anyway, yeah. fascinating stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Pez, what's happening on Patreon this week? Okay, well, we've made a decision in relation to Patreon. Least we're going to live and die this way. Uh Loyal listeners to our Patreon will be aware, yeah. you know, that we run Ask TGC Fridays and it's kind of uh, question after question of, of, of loyal listeners seeking some advice on what's going on with their cricket. It may mm. be social issues they've got. They may have emotional issues. They may have had dreams that they want interpreted. They may have had little mm. uh, incidents or episodes at their club or within their family that they'd like to be, you know, mm. passed. And they often do. And <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, some of those stories are more famous than others. So what we, will, what we thought we'd do this Thursday, is unlock one of those stories just to give, you know, the, the, the loyal listener of the, uh, you know, of the, the main show mm. a little taste. Well, they might not be sure. They might not be sure. What they is this? Sure. What What's is this? this shit? What is this? And fuck this always shit. said from the side of your mouth, yeah. fuck this shit. <laughs> so more I say, so I'm going to give you a little taste. A little taste. A little taste. If you fancy it, Great. Please, please join us. It's just so if you just see that pop up in your feed on Thursday, give no, it it's, not, it's not the Greg Chappell special interview, and thank you for your feedback on that. All the, all, all the loyal listeners. Um, it's just going to be a little 10-minute number. Have a listen. If you like it, maybe jump on board. There's plenty more where that came from. Patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. Australian ODIs versus yeah. the Indian cricket team. Pairs in Australia. Fuck, we're the best team in the world again. Yeah, and, you know, is that not the takeaway? There's been a lot of takeaways of what's happened with the men's I've had a lot of takeaways. Yes, mm. indeed. Uh, but the takeaway is that we're really good. We're pushing 400. And... You know, we always have a, a close relationship with our top order. I mean, Australia's psychological safety is intimately connected to yep. how our batters are going, okay. okay? And just have a look at the numbers next to the Have name. a look at Finch, it. Finch, 150. Warner, 80, here. then 60. Labuschagne, didn't get a bat that were going so mm. well in the first game. Then 70. Smith, ton, ton. At a good clip. Good what a, clip. We'll talk about the clip later. Fine, we'll talk about the clip. Yeah. Maxwell, fucking reverse sweeping everyone. Do what you like. Why well, do I want to say reverse dogging just then? Does that... <laughs> Fucking reverse dogged him, didn't he? Doesn't make sense. But enough about but he, my off season. But he was. Everyone got runs at all costs and times. So the safety is great. India, you know, very much looked like a team that had been in a hotel for two weeks. They did. Uh, they did. And fair play to them. You Fuck know? me, I felt safe, Pez. It's 40 Fucking degrees in November. There's a blowing wind, blowing absolute gale yeah. at the SCG, Sam. Mm. 40 degrees, bushfires must be on the way. Yeah. I feel like I feel like we're home. Normal service is resumed. Home, so normal it's service. Like, it's like why why are the lights on at the SCG when it's forty degrees? Shouldn't the sun be out? No, yeah. no, that's just the smoke stuff. Smoke it's stuff. A bit of smoke coming over. Bit of smoke I guess a bit coming of fog over. And, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Sydney. 
My God, I got to tell you. Now you know you know I'm a big Aaron Finch guy. You yeah, know that about me. Yeah, I do. Fuck me, I felt so good when I was watching Aaron Finch bat in a cap, and he's got a mo. Mm. Oh, I love seeing that. That's mm. a, that's a that's a hark back to the eighties days. Mm. Maybe yeah. some early nineties stuff. Yeah, and he's looking good. He's hitting boundaries. Opening partnerships are plus a hundred. Fucking hell! No, no, that you know. In terms We're of the, good. In terms of the wickets, Cummins is in on the wickets again. Hazelwood knocking guys over. You <sighs> yeah, know, yeah. Zampa's now come into his own. He usually takes the most wickets. Mm. It's feeling really good, mm. you know. Now I was on the internet, Sam, and I uh, oh. saw uh, you know you're aware of um fuck what's his name Simon <laughs> uh, the analyst what's his, uh, the UK Hughes. guy Hughes, sorry, thank you yes yeah, Simon Hughes sorry apologies Simon you don't listen to this but you know whatever you're a chance and he he did a tweet after the second idea and he said Australia now looking to challenge England uh, Australia can now be competitive with England the words that affects pretty sure Australia just beat England in England uh, mm-hmm. during the pandemic, but that's okay. Now, some of the comments underneath that were like, yeah, but England been doing that for five years, Australia's just catching up. So we're getting to some 1966 World Cup territories, I reckon, but they've, oh. they've, they've won their World Cup and they're thinking we can just ease back on the haunches here. But I'm think I've got to tell you, I like Australia at home, hitting 400, fuck. Yeah. Well, I, suppose, I mean, they are the World in Cup. Australia. Australia. I mean, 400 in Australia. I mean, okay, Australia didn't hit 400, but they got 380 yeah. twice. If you reverse it and we were playing a, a little bilateral series a couple of years after a World Cup or a year or so after a World Cup, heading into some tests against India, we'd be paying no respect to these games in any way. Of course not. Shape or form. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I paid more respect and attention to India's kit, which was fucking great. Now let's get onto the kit. Yeah. That's their best kit. And it's their best kit because I was seven. We were seven yeah. when they wore that kit in the yeah. 92 World Cup. Yeah. It's a, um imprinting thing. Look it up in yeah. uh, psychological journals. Anosh Prabhaka. Journals. Fuck yeah. yeah. Get me yeah. Get me some yeah. stuff. Bit of Java girl. Oh, yes, please. Early days. Now, of bit the, of Kapil Dev. Of the, oh, late Kapil years. Dev. Now white, you're feeling good, aren't you? Batten with a white lid. Yeah. Bit white. of Ravi Shastri. <laughs> Here we go. Please. <laughs> normal blokes. Two normal blokes. What do you do for work? <laughs> um, of the retro kits. Yeah. Australia's is ranked 14th yep. uh, behind Kenya. And that Indian, that's Kenya's number one. Kit. Kenya does have a good kit. That's actually an unfair um, comparison. Uh, India, that's a great kit. Yeah. I'm looking forward the to color. it. And, you know, as long as I keep serving up some 400-plus chases, then yeah. uh, I'm right behind it. Yeah. Uh, I'll say no more. I mean, just a, a, un, a categorical uh, – or uncategorical, sorry – love. Can't Andy's be categorised. Yeah. Steve Smith scored two hundreds of sixty two balls in in the space of three days. He's pretty good. Safety, worldy. Now, Absolute can we get into some? Is he getting into some isolation areas uh, areas in terms of like the big boys? So he could be the only big boy. Look, don't get me wrong. Well, Co- Coley, Coley's still a good white ball. Stick. When we're talking about white balls, I mean, because Coley's still having the white ball stuff and whatever. I just want yeah. look. Here's the thing with Smith, right? A lot going on with Smith underneath. You know, people might listen to our show last week and be like, "Oh, look, you know, he's got very media crafted answers and whatnot." You may say that. Think mm. about the bloke's career. You mm. don't get selected as a, as a leggy for your te- for your nation, mm. then become the world's best batsman without a bit going on underneath. Now, we all know what happened with Sandpaper. Okay? Well, I don't think we do. <laughs> we, we do. <laughs> yeah. no, only three people knew. That, that's, that's a good the, point. That's the view. Um, <laughs> yeah. But straight after Sandpaper, we always had that sense he was going to compensate for the time out of the game. Mm. And no one's ever seen the level of workers' compensation oh, that he, was, my God. he awarded himself oh. with the Ashes. Now He had a slip and a fall. You know, and then last year mm. he, had a, he had a so-so summer. So mm. what are we looking at this year? He's going to extract a little bit more compensation. You can see it in the eyes. Mm. Now, the thing I like about Smith, he mm. goes, he's <laughs> like, you know, when Ponting made runs mm. beforehand, the last best in Bradman until the next one, mm-hmm. Everything was easily understood. You know, everything was facial hair, goatees, hairy forearms, mm-hmm. uh, tan on the forearms. Yeah. <laughs> every sh- every shot was from Bradman's art of cricket. <laughs> Never saw Ponting's elbows. Never seen an elbow of Ponting. Um, Smith is in a fourth dimension that we don't understand. Interesting. This is the 2020 version. We don't get it. Mm. Um, you know, Smith will say this week, I found my hands. Did you, mate? Mm. Did you? Mm. What? I, I, okay, whatever that means. Mm. And then he, then there's the clip. He does it off sixty two rocks mm. twice in a row. How's like that's, a clip that's on almost. It? How's a clip on it? It's mm. almost Maxwell esque. Mm-hmm. A couple of games ago, people were like, I'm not sure if he should be in the short form. So, all right, yeah. how about has two tons of sixty two rocks mm. in a row within mm. forty eight hours of each other? Talking about Netflix and Chile doesn't even know what that means. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I'm 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 liking Smith's fourth dimension. And of course, and of course, what has happened most recently will happen forever. It'll but just continue. So, but with Smith, it might. Yeah. It actually might. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, look, we can't go past this. You've, you've had a few things to say about Glenn Maxwell. 
Um, well, and I maintain And then the Maxwell, Maxwell did what Maxwell does. Well, yeah. not what he does, but what he sometimes does. No, well, I think he's – so, like, you know, Smith's innings, 162 balls. Right? I was thinking about this when I was watching the highlights because I was away for the weekend and actually mm. catch the games live. Mm, okay. Um, but uh, I was thinking, like, you know, Smith's innings have as much won the game as, like, Maxwell comes in and just fucking – he just takes it away. Mm. Scores what, – what do you score? He scores 70, 80 or something off, like, of 15 balls or some mm. shit, you know. And it's like, well, then the game's gone then. You aren't chasing 400 in the SCG. So it's like, but his innings, he comes in then when it's like, that's, you know, we're trying to figure out how many balls Maxwell needs to face. And it's the perfect amount. It's mm. the perfect amount. Come in. Well, they promoted him in the order, I think, twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And job done. Yeah, come in with about 60 rocks left. Yeah. 60 agates. Perfect. I, you've got to feel sorry for Stoinis coming in that first game. He just gets that mm. first ball and everyone's going runs. That, mm. that, can, that seems to happen all the mm. time. There's just one bloke who gets a first ball. Like, always yeah. a first baller as well. It's weird in mm. those massive run run scores. Mm. Massive run scores. Those massive run scores they've got. But Maxwell, fuck, he's good to watch. Uh, it's an absolute joy. You know, when he's doing the switch hits and he's hitting it clean. Does anyone hit a cleaner ball? No. Better than Lynn. Better than Chris Lynn. And, like, he's not a he's not a levers person uh, in the official definition, as in the length of the arm and the bat. He's got a ponting arm. He's but, got ponting arms. But, but the pace of the lever. The pace of the lever. Uh, the, the arc of it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a full swish. It's got wonderful lever pace. Mm. And it's a big wield of the bat, you mm. know, and uh, the, everything is extended and fast and mm. level eyes and baseball and he trusts his swing. Mm. It, it's another dimension. Mm. I like it. Mm. Uh, he smiles. He enjoys the game, mm. Maxwell. Mm. It's all good. I'm loving all Enjoy that. Enjoy it. And Ian Chappell's upset about doing the switch hit. He's saying that oh, should right. be outlawed. Uncut. Well, yeah. someone someone uh, texted me the other day, or someone actually wrote into us and said, "What do you say?" Well, uh, Ian Chappell's on ABC commentary now, okay. and it sounds good. I like hearing Ian Chappell's voice. I like what he's about. Mm-hmm. Same. I'm, I sure, like I'm, him. Sh- I'm sure he cares. <laughs> but um, and he apparently, you know, Jim Maxwell's obviously the doyen of ABC Grandstand. Yeah. But I think when Ian Chappell sat down with him the first time in many years, as far as I understand, he, he addressed him as James. Maxwell, just to let him know. Wow. Yeah, just to let him know. Yeah. And then someone else told me that apparently, and if anyone's got the clip of this, we're probably not even allowed to play it or whatever, but like the, apparently Chapel started blowing up at Jim Maxwell for a story about um, some bloke from Kent coming over to Eastern Suburbs who were Jim Maxwell's president mm. uh, who just recently hit 238 for Kent um, coming over to East and East started him in twos so he could earn his <laughs> stripes. <laughs> Mate, yeah, find all those really flat dicks over exactly. in Kent. I could have got that story wrong, but it was something. Someone alphaed someone, and it was in a whole, whole Australia, England thing. Now, what's going on with India, Pez? Because, you know, a couple of alarm bells here. You know, like Coley, he's, not, he's only playing one test match. The bowlers, like Boomer, didn't bowl particularly well, which is weird because he's such a great death bowler as well. Went for like, he went for 80 twice. I all think. the bowlers went for everything. That's then. true, because even Stark went for runs as well, so it's hard to figure out. But then, like, the fielding, he, I the I fielding, was, <laughs> the fielding was fucking grim city, man. Yeah. From India. Well, the kids are looking good, but the hands weren't. Yeah. They, they lost their hands. The oh, hands. well, I mean, the intelligent thing to do right now would be after two games to say that how those two games went, well, they'll therefore be oh, a, I just an think they looked a little bit, thing. I think they looked a bit frightened, especially the batsmen. Mm. Yeah, a little bit scared. Scaredy bats. Right. You, you, you bringing out the scaredy bats now? You know what after I'm doing. After last year? You yeah. know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know that Pajara is the one that scares Australia for yeah. the tests. And where's he been? Yeah. yeah. Where's can't, it? Can't go up the square. That's scared. Yeah, <laughs> can't even get a game. <laughs> Pez, what if, what if wickets are you know like we have these are the two these are two record breaking scores in ODI cricket in Australia. What if, what if because there's no AFL games this year, no footy games basically being played during the winter. Like, what if wickets are good and cricket's good? Like you know, kind of leading to the summer a bit like might not be that good. You know, Coley's going away. I've just said it again there. You know, crowds, ah, there's a pandemic. It's all a bit, feels, feels strange. But what if wickets are just good and the cricket's amazing? And Mate, what if Australia as a nation produces a close match in cricket one day? In Australia. In Australia. A test match that's close. The last one was 1993 against yeah. the West Indies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. yeah. There's, a lot, there's a lot of Warner talk, a lot of like star player talk and like that's yeah. what we like about it. It's like imagine if it's a really close series contested between team one and two on wickets that aren't completely affected by footy players. Yeah. You well, know, it's something. Something. Could happen. Now, the big takeaway from the two games so far, the third ODI Pets is tomorrow. Mm. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, it's right. As we go to where. Um, and uh, and Warner has done his groin. Yeah. And now it's a race against time. Yeah. He's going to play cricket for yeah. Australia in a test match. He's got, what, 17 days now, 16 days until... Yeah, 16 days until the first test match, December 16th in Adelaide. I think that's right. Shout out to uh, new podcast, Cricket Etc., with uh, Pete Lawler and Gideon Hay. Mm-hmm. Uh, great cricket info on that. Um, Lawler, who's, you know, pretty 
close to the entire to all the action said yesterday his sources tell him that Warner is 100% Buckley's chance of starting in that first test. Like there's lots of breakdown there. Yeah. A couple of double negatives. Yeah. Uh, so, so you know, that opens up the door for Bukowski, et cetera. Uh, look, you know, we've, we've talked about – like a lot, there's, there's so much drama around Warner's injury. How do you do it? Brett Lee was on comms saying, yeah, it looks like he's torn the groin off the bone. Did, you know, how, they were trying to work out, was it – did, did he stretch it? Did he bang his knee? He reckons he banged his knee, Warner, or something, and mm. that created the adductor injury. And right. then, you know, the whole vibe of it was like the cameras went downstairs and got him, like, uh, mm. leaving the scene. Mm. Um, it's the theatre. Fo- it was. And, but, but one – we. we a friend of the show got in touch with us and just pointed out, mm. if you just watch him leave, and go and look at this, listeners, but uh, when he was fielding, he was in a short-sleeve mm. Australian ODI kit, okay? <laughs> Fast forward a couple of minutes when he's racing off to the hospital. He jumps in the car. You see, oh, he's got Warner on the back. And the kid, oh, okay, he's just had to quickly get in the car. No, 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 he's got changed. He's like, oh, I'm a bit cold uh, on this day. What's he put on? His long-sleeve ODI kit. <laughs> And it was pointed out to us perhaps he was just putting on his Aussie kit just to ensure that the hospital staff were aware of who he was and who he was around. But basically he, he has chosen to, you know, after changing out of his playing kit, yeah. he's chosen to don Australian kit to go to the hospital, which if I was him, I would do too. Mate, I'd be wearing it every day of the week if I had the chance. 100%. You know, it would be as well. Mm. Well, you know, hopefully, I mean, that, that actually almost kind of levels up the series a little bit, you know, in terms yeah. of like a, a, a home Warner who averages, I think, 65 yeah. in Australia mm. – 1800s in Australia. Mm. Fuck mm. me. That hates, a stick, hates a stick in Australia. Fucking hates a stick in Australia. That's so many hundreds, man. Yeah. 18 yeah. test hundreds. That's okay. heaps, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, no Coley, no Warner. I mean, yeah. we've still got Smith, but Even you know, out. so, but I, well, I don't know. I just yeah. think maybe, maybe Pekowski's better than Warner. Well, <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, one of the great things that we have been confirmed leading up into this test series, Sam, is uh, Cam Green's height, though. A lot of discussion about that. So, so it appears as though it is uh, now confirmed mm. that Cam Green, the big boy mm. that is, mm. is indeed two hundred centimeters on the dot. Now, I'm I'm still not sure. I still think there's discussion about it. I still think there's a lot of grainy grainy stuff mm-hmm. around Cam Green. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, I still don't know how he walks. I don't know how he talks. Yeah, I don't know what his shots look like as I a big boy. You know, there's a lot of vague big boy stuff, again, without any confirmation of his height. Yeah, his Instagram's uh, private. It's only like four photos. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, y- you know, I don't know if he's thick <laughs> to match the, the mm. height. Mm. And it's still it's still grainy. Like, a, a story, he goes. I was Please. thinking, oh, what's grainy? 1993, I'm aged eight. Okay. I'm in year three. Are oh, year yeah, four, mate. teacher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, come, into school, come to school early, everyone, if you want to watch the Socceroos against Argentina Fuck yeah. in the World Cup qualifier from Buenos Aires. Yes, please. Okay? Yes, please, sir. First leg had already been played. Yeah. Uh, 1-1. Okay. Correct. Uh, I believe – I can't remember who scored for Argentina, but Vidmar, Vid- Vidmar. hit back six yeah. minutes later. Yes, that's right. At the Sydney Football Stadium. And uh, yeah. they played at Buenos Aires. Now, yeah. an unfortunate result for Australia. Batistuta swings in a, a ball from the corner and uh, look officially goes down as an own goal to Alex Tobin. Wasn't he a player? Tobin. No, Batistuta. <laughs> Alex Tobin. No, yeah. he was too. Right, to your point. Batistuta, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, like two, reasons I'm, two reasons I'm saying this. One, RIP Maradona. Of course. Maradona? Mm. Fuck. Maradona is yeah. what I meant to say. RIP Maradona. And, um, you know, that footage, much like Cam Green, was grainy and scary. Okay. And, and I just still think Green's grainy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's much uncertainty still. And also the announcement of 200 centimetres is a bit clean for me. Yeah, it what like is really it? exactly two hundred rounded up? Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a round up job is a round yeah. down. Uh, indeed, I, I think know. You, I think if you're that tall, you might round down. That might be one of the only things you ever round down. Well, let us know if you're that tall how you like to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, there's gonna be some weird messages this week. <laughs> Maradona, yeah, I'll yeah. pay for that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just on green, <laughs> yeah, you will. Just on, yeah, <laughs> just on green. Uh, yes. So Stoinis got injured, as you know. He goes, and there was a. There was then a discussion about is it time now to bring in Cam Green or are we going to go with Moses mm. or Sean Abbott? And uh, I think, you know, there's a big part of us that all wanted Cam Green for, for the grainy big boy reasons. Yeah, Zapruder reasons. Um, but he has – Zapruder reasons, but he has zero, you know, for Buenos Aires reasons. Yes. <laughs> Buenos Aires. Was it an own goal? Or was now, it what, what was scary, Buenos Aires or Montevideo when we played Uruguay? <sighs> 
Mm. Montevideo seemed terrifying, mm. like fucking stones being thrown. Still, the still bus. Buenos Aires because Why? it was Argentina. Uh, Argentina is still level, of, War? level above Uruguay in terms of like football standing. Maradona's playing. It's yeah, yeah. it's twelve years earlier, so the production values aren't as good either. And like oh, I, I looked some point. footage this that's morning, and like point. the crowd was like nearly on top of the they were falling over in the stands. It was okay. raucous, wild yes, stuff. Right. Yeah. Um. Anyway, and so yeah, we were, sorry, I just lost where I was at uh, for a second, but like you know. Cam Grey doesn't really have like a lot of white ball pedigree or numbers no. as opposed to Moses. And I just want to make the point that – Or Sean Abbott. Moses was Cam Green before Cam Green was Cam Green. That's true. Moses – it never really got more prodigal runs than mm-hmm. Moses Enriquez. Mm-hmm. Uh, in many ways, we should be saying Cam Green is Moses Mark too. you know, uh, except the difference is that Moses is thick. Moses is strong. Um, Moses is – even greater prodigal runs than Green. Moses, Moses definitely bowl one forties. We have you know visual like you know we can confirm that. Now he bowls off speed stuff and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And what anyway? You know, he had a good game. He didn't get much of a bat, but took a hanger to yeah. dismiss Coley and Bowl well. He's also probably got the best salad in Australian cricket, mate. Salad chests mm. is that is is the whole thing. And mm. I'm very pleased to see Moses, uh, friend of the show, get a game. So he was my age group. So therefore, now mm. I play for Australia. Yep. There you go. I dropped him once. Yeah. Drop the catch. Not a, I didn't ah. punch him. <laughs> <laughs> this There's is some King chance. Hit stuff. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, dropped him. Yeah, yeah coward punch. Um, Pez, uh, the WBBL has been yeah. completed, uh, and the Thunder have won the WBBL. And once again, you guys, the Stars capitulate. The Stars franchise capitulate mm. in the final. Mm. Now, is this is this is now. Branching across mm. men's and women's cricket, WBBL. Firstly, the uh, the Thunder played really well. Ishmael Tauramat. That was it. That was it. Yeah. And now you the, th- you were talking about like prodigy. Uh, pro- prodigy. Mm, um, that like was prodigy. Prodigy. Prodigy the stuff. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, Phoebe Litchfield. Is she still twelve? Sixteen. I think there are some younger. Fifteen. Some younger women who've come in. Like yeah. that's that makes me feel so safe because I just want. I've said it before. Just like the, the Australian, the Australian, the Australian women team just need to win forever, never lose yeah. again. She's got a team of Elise Perry's basically yeah. just absolute guns. Keep pumping that money into the game so Australia never lose again in the women's cricket. I'm worried about the stars. He goes. Why? Uh, well, they assemble. You know, eponymously, like they assemble their the a team true to its name. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, in both men's and women's cricket. I watch this game. Mm. Lanning won the toss. They've been chasing the entire time, mm. and Lanning chose to bat, probably just to say, look, we can do it both ways. Fair play. Ishmael ran through them. Um, so be it. But it just made me think, you know, I was watching Melbourne Stars, who are now, uh, you, I don't think we can deny this, but now kind of a tra- attracting an idea that they perhaps capitulate at the big moment. You know, our, our good friend Zorby said he's got unfinished business there at the Stars. They've mm-hmm. never won a comp in the men's, and now the women have fallen, have felt fallen over. They were the best team uh, all tournament. Mm. I couldn't help but, you know, remember that we talked to Woodhill the week before that mm-hmm. and he sledged my North Sydney Bears top, which I'm wearing today. They were playing at North Sydney Oval. Mm-hmm. Nobody choked more in sports history than the North Sydney Bears. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering if Woodhill's uh, comments have come back to bite him there. And, in mm-hmm. fact, it's Trent's fault. <laughs> Who gave a wonderful interview as I was just being towed up on Channel 7 as well during yeah. the game. They said, do you think you've made a mistake by not uh, bowling first? He's like, no, not really. Uh, yeah. They just had a really good bowler yeah. who just um, yeah. went through us and uh, oh, I guess we've, we'll enjoyed, the, out, we've we? enjoyed the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I wish men's cricket talked more like that. Yeah. No, not really. They were just, they were just better. Yeah. yeah. All good. That's also, yeah, that's also, no one's ever allowed to be better than you. Yeah. So you're just like, no, we, we fucked up. We yeah. were shit today. Uh, there's one bowler, just too good. Yeah, too good. Mm. Hey, uh, Pez, uh, South Africa, uh, England are in South Africa. Yep. Um, and they've had, they've, Played two T20s. England won both of those. In the first T20, England did 183. They chased down South Africa's 179. Johnny Bairstow, not friend of the show, and perhaps will remain not friend of the show. Why do you say that? Well, he scored 86 of 48. Now, Bairstow's been called up for the test squad for Sri Lanka, and they're going, they're going to Sri Lanka in, going? in January, and oh, that means that Bairstow is going to withdraw from the, from the WBBL and the BBL. Is that uh, official now, or or it's yeah. reports are in? Uh, so that that's that's from that's from Will McPherson, friend of the show, and the Evening yeah. Standard. Um, so I believe that is going to be the case that he will not. And be Will is closely connected, so it doesn't look like he's going to come to the Big Bash this year. And um, I don't know. We've, We've got other guests in the works, guys. I mean, there's a there's a collective. We can keep asking for best, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We're <laughs> asking Danny. See if we get two blue ticks there again. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that that that's a the dream has died there. But I keep thinking it's the Ashes next year, mm. and perhaps that's the time 
for JB, you know, like they mm. stay at the hotel down the road. Are England going to offer up offer up players to the Great Cricketer podcast? Depends how we behave ourselves, I presume. So uh, Joff Rach has been rested, uh, which I think is what's going to happen here. They're going to bring in Besto on the back of Archer being rested. So okay. um, that's obviously a like-for-like replacement there. Uh, so he belongs in the test. I mean, he's a good bat. He's a good stick. But it's not and good some of the chat has been that um, – because because Bairstow hasn't played since the Ashes, so twenty nineteen didn't play didn't play Test this year. I think he averages uh, he averaged forty four in Sri Lanka. Now England played against Sri Lanka a couple of years ago and they beat them three 0 That was just before the Ashes, I believe, right. twenty eighteen. Right. Um, and then the, they play against India as well. So I think Bairstow has got a pretty good record against spin. I think pace is where Bairstow is struggling the Test arena. He gets bowled a lot. You might you might recall from the uh, from the Test arena Bairstow. Anyway. Maybe England needs a wanger specialist like India has. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They got a wanger yeah. specialist. They got a guy who he throws the wanger. He can. Coley says he can do it at 155 k's an hour. So What's Ra- the point? Ragavendra, I believe, uh, is his name. Okay. He's. I think he's currently in quarantine. He, he got COVID for a second, so mm-hmm. he might be out of it. I'm sorry. I mean, in contrast, I learned that in the same piece. I mm-hmm. think. I think from Chris Barrett, if I'm correct, from Simon Herald, or it might have been Andrew Wu. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Um, Ponting, Ricky Ponting's been throwing balls to Steve Smith mm-hmm. and finding it really difficult. I think he might use the wanger or not, and he says his arm's about to fall off. Mm. Now, I just, you know, in in contrast to Ragavendra, that's a very interesting development in the uh, best since Bradman alpha hierarchies. What do you is, mean? Well, one best since Bradman Ponting is throwing balls that are about to, you know, throw his arm off. Mm-hmm. To the next best since Bradman, Steve Smith. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Oh, the just, sac- he's sacrificing himself for the greater know. good. I don't know. Just a, something to think about. Something. Oh, you're saying no? That Ponting should be careful because he's gonna he's gonna u- usurp Ponting's well, legacy. Smith's just saying, can you can I just have you know, just ten more? Ten and more. Famously, just wants a million balls thrown at him. Yeah. So endless. And the point of the wanger is that it, it relieves some stress on the arm. And you can you can uh, you can get it to go a bit quicker too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now a one fifty five. I mean. Is it really? I'm, 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 I suppose Coley says it goes so quick that he actually feels like he's got more time when bowlers bowl at him in the nets. Okay, so it probably is pretty handful. Yeah, really pretty Coley have a, clue, have a clue. Yeah, <laughs> looking forward to seeing Coley have a net. Uh, if anyone's any any, any uh, footage of that, uh, and the second T Twenty Pez uh, England chase down one forty seven um, with one ball to spare. Dawid Milan, obviously South African born, uh, hit fifty five in that chase. Batted really well with Owen Morgan. And he said the local knowledge because he was playing his home ground there. We actually debuted in uh, for in South African uh, pr- uh, provincial cricket all those years ago. He said uh, that the local knowledge was zero help to his innings. Mm. Um, so, which would probably make sense. One of the best T Twenty bats in the world. Though, now he's going. Seen. He's playing for the Hurricanes. He's signed yeah. for the Hurricanes. One of the best in the world. Yeah, I, I've um. I could be wrong about this. I feel like I've heard around the traps that mm. uh, although he's ranked so high, he's a T20 batsman, he's not always favoured in the England side, yeah, yeah, particularly yeah. by the skipper. Now, he played um, really well in that Australian series in, in yeah, England as well. Th- that's right. Mm. Uh, so, so against that backdrop, I thought it was interesting that if there is any kind of uh, iciness between Morgan and Milan, mm. which is just pure speculation on my part, Love it may that. not even be true and, and, and certainly not no, enjoyable. Let's go with but it. Yeah, let's, let's go, go with, with it. it. Yeah. He, he said after his innings overnight uh, that he loves batting with Owen Morgan, and I think the quote was, his weaknesses are my strengths, and vice versa. I thought, mm. mm, that's, an, that's an interesting mm. turn of phrase. Mm. Torblin uh, Day. Yeah. <laughs> you say that about your skipper, he's drawing at the side of your weaknesses. He's just, your weaknesses yeah. are my strengths, <laughs> and, and vice versa. And my strengths is, you know, his strengths are my weaknesses yeah. and stuff. But now how long was the pause in between ex- the exactly, two? Exactly, how yeah. much time was given to the first yeah. one or the second one? I mean, I, yeah. I guess I have to see the footage. Yeah. But uh, interesting. Interesting stuff. Interesting, something interesting. to keep an eye on. Something to keep an eye on. <laughs> now, you said before about, uh, what's what's the wanger guy's name? Uh, Ragavendra. Uh, um, Ragavendra. He, uh, got, he picked up COVID. He picked it up. He picked up a bit of COVID. <laughs> well, I saw it because um, Pakistan are going to New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, playing a bit, of, play a bit of, play a bit of cricket over there. And uh, six of six of that um, six of the Pakistan side have picked up COVID, and, oh, okay. that, and this is also so New Zealand are playing the West Indies at the moment in the T Twenty and ODI yeah. series. And at the beginning of that, the West Indies weren't allowed to train because about half the squad um, broke quarantine yeah. rules. Yeah. And then so anyway, since then New Zealand uh, they're playing the they're playing the third T Twenty as we record. But uh, New Zealand are two nil up in that series. Glenn Phillips hit a fifty one ball hundred in one of those matches. He got one hundred and forty six balls. Um, New Zealand fucking good at home. I mean, they, we've got to keep in mind New Zealand just towed up India as well in test matches, although India did win the uh, the short form stuff. There, they so. play really good cricket, positive uh, bunch of guys, and, you know, Colin, uh, CDG, if you are listening, <laughs> let's do it, brother. Let's get it going. Bez, before we uh, we introduce our, our guest to the show, Mark Jr. Wall, uh, one thing I want to see what has popped up is uh, Jared Abood, the umpire, senior mm. umpire. Who's Jared Abood, Pez? 
Oh, yeah, he's a he's umpired nine internationals, mm-hmm. uh, an Australian guy. He's You've on, seen he's on the, the Big Bash. Circuit. He's on the Cricket Australia's panel of umpires. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so he was fined for poor behaviour at his son's under thirteens game. Yeah. Discuss. This was reported by Andrew Wu in in the Tonk um, Sydney Morning Herald. Yeah, five thousand dollars for questioning his son's dismissal in an under thirteens match. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's on Cricket Australia's panel of umpires. Official had nine internationals. He challenged a run out decision, which sent his son packing on ninety eight. Ninety eight. Uh, earlier this month. Now, let's get a few things right. It was the final ball of the innings, and I understand through the article that there was conjecture over whether the ball was dead or not. So I think it might have – look, I'm just, like, uh, trying to put a few things together, but yeah. perhaps 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 his son thought the innings was over. So his son was not out on 98. There was no more runs to be completed or right. anything. So, so it wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't of, denied He wasn't 100. denied mm. 100 no. via this decision, but he may have just left his crease to walk off and then they've, you know, taken the stumps. And I yeah. think uh, – I think a bird's gone up to the coach. I'm just again reading between the lines of the the um, the article. Yeah. Gone up to the coach and said you got to withdraw the appeal or something. And um, it, it, he'd acted in an intimidatory manner to their coach and questions the coach's sportsmanship in con- in condoning the appeal. Now look, you know I'm going to come down the side of this. He goes, I think it's PC gone mad. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you know we talk about rights of passages for sons. In the backyard. <laughs> yeah, we do. What about rights of passages for fathers? Every father get, should get one shot yeah. at giving it to people for, you know, disadvantaging their offspring, I don't, their progeny. I don't have any children, Sam, but I would find it very hard to, like, if your son has been wronged in front of you, how do you not, like, you, when your boys kill, play kill cricket. Kill someone. Yeah, I think you get one, you get to take one you get life. Who doesn't get one? <laughs> Well, don't forget, this was a rep match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, reps. Wasn't, this wasn't clubby nah, stuff. No, it's fucking reps. It's yeah, it's really shorts on. Local ground. Yeah, a boot's got his cricket Australia was, stuff on. This was metropolitan region. This is <laughs> suburb versus suburb, yeah. you know? Yeah, mate uh, versus mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I think he apologised and everything. I don't know. My, my sons aren't old enough for me to experience that. I suppose there's been a bit of playground stuff in the past. I don't remember one of those guys who goes on about their own kids. But, you, yeah, you do see so your son might be wronged or – a kid like yeah. throws some tan bark at your son or something. Yeah, like, hmm, what's going yeah. on here? Hello, yeah. the parent. Anything? Yeah. Anything doing? Anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm sure grade cricket will have kept me in great stead for that. Oh if and yeah, there's a flashpoint. Real level head, yeah. mate. Why do you talk out your side of your mouth? These people say. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know. I've blacked out. <laughs> Come on, boys, work hard here. Um, there's Mark War is on the show, and of course, this the interview is sponsored by our very good friends Ponting Wines. Indeed, we we, we can only introduce the Mark War interview via. Letting you know about Ponting Wines. Felix wants to say about Ponting Wines. Firstly, sampled a couple of them last Hell week. Hell of a drop, it seems. Mate, it is a good drop. Oh, yeah. The Cab Sav and the Shiraz. I should yeah. probably know what they're actually named there because they do have their own names, but I don't remember. Yeah. But I sampled two bottles with my dear friend, yeah. uh, Tim. And... Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, right. Um, and might I say, good... <laughs> Good drop. Now, of course, I would say that. Yeah, you would say that. On the that. show. Yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, look, I don't know what it retails out as a solo, but it's certainly outside my price range, you know, when I'm when I'm taking a bottle of wine home. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a good, clean drop yeah. uh, on both sides, yeah. uh, both sides, on the Shiraz and the Cab Sav. Yeah. Uh, so I'm talking that up. Now, we said last week we got offer codes for people, and we do, yeah. okay? You buy yourself, ladies and gentlemen, you buy yourself a case of Ponting Wines <laughs> and use the offer code Get a few. <laughs> at checkout and you're going to get yourself 10% off that case yeah. using that code get a few G-E-T-A-F-E-W get a few and uh, 10% off case of Ponting Whites now here's Mark War. he goes as ever some numbers to begin with please and this guy who's on the other end he doesn't realise that we start with the numbers but we know cricketers are defined by the numbers so here's some That's right. okay uh, 128 tests 8,029 runs, high score of 153, not out. Average 41.81, 20 tonnes, 47.50s, 181 catches. 244 ODIs, 8,500 runs, high score of 173. Average of 39.35, let's call that 40-odd. Yes. Uh, 18 tonnes, 50 50s, 108 catches. 368 first-class games, 26,855 runs, high score of 229, not out. Average of 52.04, 81 tonnes, 133.50s. Uh, this is a solemn moment for TGC. Here he goes. Uh, we're, we're just monks professing our monastic vows at the feet of this V100 Slazenger wielding god. Uh, today we talk to the icon of elegance, the totemic symbol of looking good, the batting Picasso of our time. Uh, how important was he to Australian children of the 90s? He goes, well, 30 years after he modelled it, I just gave my two-year-old son a Mark War haircut from 1990. That's how much he meant to us. Um, 
In the annals of TGC pleasures, I, it, it's a, it's my deepest pleasure to welcome to the show Australia, New South Wales, Essex, and Bankstown legend to the show, M.E. War Junior. Welcome to the Great Cricketer. Good day, guys. That's that's the best introduction I've ever had in, in any shape or form. So yeah, good to be with you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> can, can can we call you Junior or June for this chat? Yeah, no, Junior's fine. I don't. Yeah. don't June, uh, but June is good, mate. We'll go with June. Yeah, we'll leave June. All right. <laughs> Even though I'm a senior these days. <laughs> uh, Junior, it's, this is a show that you know tries to make sense of the global cricketing world through Australian grade cricket. So let's start there. You know, can you take us into Sydney grade cricket in the eighties and nineties? How did you get your start, and, and what do you remember about it? Well, I um, obviously grew up in the Bankstown area, and um, Bankstown was the, the logical club to go to at that time. My uncle. Um, fellow called Dion Bourne, he is a legend at Bankstown Cricket Club and he sort of got us into cricket at Bankstown, played Green Shield and then um, then eventually got a call up to play grade cricket. My first grade game was actually in fourth grade, so I bypassed fifth grade, which didn't exist. I, mm. Somehow I just went straight to fourth grade and um, my first fourth grade game, I think it was a punch ball oval against Fairfield. I got about 20 runs, I think, um, and I was only... Well, 15 years of age, I think, 14 or 15, playing fourth grade. So that was my first uh, introduction to grade cricket with Bankstown, who were a great club, of course. You know, we had a lot of great players and a bit of history there and and some great facilities, punch bowl oval, the lower grade ground, and then, of course, Bankstown was the, the top grade ground. But that was my first game in fourth grade. Mm. Like an, an important question that grade cricketers will recognise about sort of dressing room culture here, Junior. So I, I take this from Mark Gately's War Declared book, uh, published in 92, to, and I'll just read this passage. He goes, but just because the twins were playing with the big boys didn't mean they were ready emotionally. A number of teammates have said that Mark was too shy to shower with the older boys after the day's play had finished. We thought he had wooden legs, said teammate and close mate Andy Duval. I don't think we ever saw them. He always had tracksuit pants on. And another teammate and punting partner, Bill York, said that Mark claimed he didn't shower because he didn't sweat. Now, Junior, like, <laughs> this isn't a stitch up. Um, it's more an opportunity to set the record straight because a lot of young chaps will be very pleased to hear that even the great Mark Waugh was a reluctant tubber mm. early on. Um, h- how did you manage that and did you grow out of it? Mm. Yeah, that was early on. I, I did I did eventually shower, yeah. That was, but I didn't sweat much, I must admit. Maybe there was good enough runs to sweat, but... Um, <laughs> Wooden legs, I don't know about that one either. I actually rate my legs quite highly, but um, maybe, <laughs> I was going, maybe I was going through a growth stage or something you know, mid, mid-teens, which I wasn't happy with my, my legs, but eventually I think they, they turned out all right. So, I mean, there's a couple of myths there, but we'll, we'll go with what the boy's saying. And um, But I must admit, when you're 14 or 15 you're playing with grown men, it's just a bit intimidating, yeah, isn't it? Uh, you know, t- the big, yeah. big mistake. Big moustaches and hairy legs and goodness mm-hmm. knows what else. So, <laughs> yeah, you've got to imagine, you know, being a, a shy sort of 14 or 15 year old. It's a, a bit of a wake up call, I must admit. Maybe that's why you were so good off the legs because you're protecting your main asset. I mean, that's, that could, that could, could, well, could well have been. Uh, I want to just go into like sort of my, just uh, obviously the family had huge success with obviously yourself and Steve. Um, but just going through the family history, I went through yeah, ancestry.com apparently mm. to, to find this. But like, you I mean, your grandfather mm. played rugby league for New South Wales Country. Uh, your yep. dad was ranked eighth in Australia as a junior tennis player. Your mum won a state singles title as a junior, also mm. in tennis. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, you said before, Dion Bourne, your uncle there, had the at one point had the most runs ever for Bankstown. It's got like over 8,000 mm. runs in first grade. You yourself were the youngest players ever picked in New South Wales primary school soccer side. You and Steve played for Sydney, Croatia, uh, about mm-hmm. the age of 16. You captained New South Wales schoolboys in cricket and tennis. And now your nephew, of course, has played for Australians in the 19s. I mean, how's the bloodline? Mm. Like, is, is anyone not good at sport? Yeah, his brother played for New South Wales as well. So oh, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, in horse racing terms, it's sort of uh, reduced choice and sensible uh, stallion type bloodlines. Yeah, it's, um, that's unbelievable. You know, the group group one um, bloodlines, I guess. But um, yeah, and no, I was just lucky that obviously mum and dad were tremendous sportsmen and encouraged us. And Uncle Dion, that's probably where the cricket comes in the family. Um, obviously, dad didn't play cricket, but Uncle Dion was a mm. fantastic player and the leading run scorer there for Bankstown and the first grade captain for a lot of years. So. Mind you, we probably played play a few more shots than Uncle Dion. He just had the one shot, the full shot. So, um, but yeah, there's there's good bloodlines there, and I think um, you know we just grew up playing all sports. You know, whether it be tennis, soccer, cricket, um, they all just moulded into one really. Um, so, well, eventually, I suppose we had the choice. Myself and Stephen. When I say we, myself and Stephen were pretty good at soccer, mm. and there was a bit of a. a a fork in the road, whether we play soccer or concentrate on cricket, you know, when we got to sort of the late teens, um, 
thankfully we went the, the cricket way. Mm. Uh, how talented were your brothers, Danny and Dean? Because, I mean, sometimes you see, like, for instance, um, I believe Dave Warner's brother, Steve Warner, was considered, like, the talented one, inverted commas, of the family. But obviously, then <laughs> David's sort of gone on to do great things. I mean, obviously, um, you know, Dean and I mean, all, all the war mm. boys have captained first grade at Bankstown, so they're, yep. all, they're all pretty handy. Um, but, I mean, yep. was there any discernible difference in talent levels between any of the four of you? Oh, no, I thought, no, we all had great talent. And mm. they always say the younger ones are the best ones, you know, coming through. Mm. They always mm. said that. But, um, no, Dean and Danny were both fine players in their own right. I mean, what's the odds of four brothers in one family playing for Australia? It's pretty thin odds. Uh, I suppose the odds were stacked against Dean and Danny once me and Stephen had played for Australia. I mean, obviously, there's the Chapel brothers and the three brothers. But, yeah. um, look, Dean played uh, some first-class cricket. And, you know, he's a big, strong hitter of the ball. And, Great fieldsman, and Danny uh, had the talent as well. Um, you know, he captain first grade. He was an excellent batsman and all rounder, sort of great fieldsman as well. Um, just didn't quite get the, the chances to, to go all the way, but um, you know, they ended up doing other jobs. But you know, their level of cricket um, was pretty good. You know, they were definitely good enough to be, to be first class cricketers and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had the skills and just didn't, didn't the breaks didn't fall their way, really. Mm. They're always going to have Group 1 bloodlines as well. So um, I, I just want to ask <laughs> yeah, you, uh, Mark, about yeah. uh, your, just your time playing league cricket in England because I think it helped him inform your approach to cricketers. So you tell, tell a story a long time ago about young Aussie kids playing league cricket sort of getting stitched up, you know, hazed mm. by the wily English clubmen. They'd, they'd call and say you were playing when you weren't or vice versa, and you, <laughs> but, but you got off lightly. You go on to say if they don't like someone, they strip them, take them out to the nursery ground at Lord's there, stake them out uh-huh. on the ground with nothing on. They then get this bucket and put whatever they want in it, spit, urine, water, grass, food, anything, and they throw it all yeah. over you. Then they paint you white with shoe cleaner oh as well. God. As far as cricket was concerned, it didn't teach me much at all, but it did teach me not to trust anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was when I was awarded an SA scholarship um, by Cricket Australia. I, I had the, um, the lucky... Um, bit to go to MCC, so I I was an MCC young professional there for about three or four months uh, on a scholarship. I actually played league cricket in the Bolton League up north in a different uh, another different season, but that year I was at MCC. I actually did get stitched up. I didn't get all that treatment you just spoke about, but I got told I was going to meet the Queen during the Test match. Um, England were playing, I'm not sure who, but the Queen obviously was going to the Test match, and I got told that I, I was going to meet her at in the tea break. Um, so I got all dressed up, um, a big jacket on and my whites on, but it was all a stitch up. No, I never got the meet the queen. So they stitched me up in that way. But, um, yeah, look, I, I learned some things while I was at MCC. I actually bowled to the, to the old members and I did, um, the covers duty during test matches and, and, um, and county cricket games where, you know, if it rained, you had to, go and put the covers on the ground. So that was all part of my scholarship at um, MCC. I didn't learn much about cricket because I was, the teams we were playing against, I was, you know, I was sort of more advanced than them. So, But anyway, it was all fun and part of the learning curve. When you went over to, to England Junior, um, you played that, playing in that Bolton League, apparently you scored 1,460 mm. runs and took 75 wickets. Um, mm. i got two questions. Um, first of all, well, we spoke to Sir Curly Ambrose recently and he didn't remember the, the club's name that he took 115 wickets at where the team <laughs> finished fifth in the league. So two questions. Do you remember the name of the, uh, the, name yeah. of the club and uh, how did that team go when you got 1,400 runs and 75 poles? Well, the name of the club was Edgerton. I think we ran pretty much close to, to the bottom. I should have had 175 wickets because they couldn't catch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was bowling. Like, I was quite – had a bit of bit of pace about me in those days. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The, the backstop, the keeper and the slips just couldn't catch. So <laughs> they cost me 100 wickets. Um, so I should have had 175. But, um, yeah, look, I remember just I'd, – I'd bowl – it was 50 over games, I think, in those days. So I'd just basically bowl 25 over straight from one end and then I'd go out and bat and score a lot of runs. So – uh, I, I remember the ground had a huge slope on it mm. where I played at Edgerton uh, in the Bolton League. And there was a lot of good professionals in that league, actually. A lot of the Indians and West Indians played. Um, Dil Vensaka, Shet and Sharma, they were both mm. pros. And there was a lot of West Indians, sort of second-tier West Indian cricketers who were pretty good players. A few Aussies as well, like Rod Tucker and um, those sorts of guys. So, yeah, look, I, I remember it fondly, um, but they, they worked there. Geez, I worked hard. I, I was six foot when I went over and about five foot four when I returned. You know, all the work I did on the field. But, um, 
but it was a good, it was a good learning curve. Good learning curve. Is it true as well that the captain of that team was a dentist and he was so impressed with your season yeah. that he gave you free treatment? Is that true? Yeah. He, he gave me um, my front teeth because um, I had caps on because I knocked them out when I was a youngster. To, and I had caps in my front teeth. And he said, if you score a thousand runs, he said, I'll give you know, two crowns for nothing in my front teeth. And he did, yeah. Yep. He must be looking after half the Australian team because they've got a bit of work yeah. done. Seals, <laughs> Steve Smith. Yeah. His name was Moss too. I remember his, his surname, Moss. I can't remember his first. Phil, might have been, uh, might have been Phil Moss. Yeah. Anyway. That's good. He, he gave me a new set of choppers, which was good. There's a lovely anecdote as we move on to your, to your test career, Junior, that, um, from on your hundred on uh, for your hundred on debut versus England '91. So your dad, Roger, uh, wasn't able to make it due to work commitments, but he says, uh, "I remember listening at the shop and being a nervous wreck. I shut the shop early, and he got his hundred just before six o'clock. It was great. Never in my wildest dreams did I think he'd bat so beautifully first up. It was an unbelievable innings. Really, uh, we talk about dads a lot on the show, Junior. It must have been a wonderful thing." to um, hear that from your dad. It's funny because he, he goes on to say he, he gets more cheesed off with criticism of his boys and he's not even playing the game. And I found that interesting because last year we heard a story about your brother Stephen watching his son and your nephew Austin play against North Sydney in second grade. Austin's in a back and forth with a player and Steve starts walking around the boundary sledging this North player too. Uh, so we asked Steve about it. He said, yeah, I was just giving him some advice. Um, so just as Austin's uncle, do, do you get out to watch him play much and would you do the same? Oh, I haven't. I haven't seen Austin play much, to be honest, because uh, I live out the Central Coast. But uh, he's he's a pretty talented player. But going back to Dad, Dad used to have the news agent, obviously, and he he never used to like uh, the Australian newspaper, the, the journalists who wrote for them, because they, they used to bag me and Stephen a lot. So I used to put those newspapers at the back of the shop and not sell them. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Australian newspapers weren't selling very well at uh, the Brisbane news agent. But Dad, Dad used to think he was a jinx, actually. Like if he come to the ground to watch us. Even club cricket, he'd sort of sneak in and hide, or you know, he he really thought you know he'd bring bad luck to us. But where did he uh, hide? He did, oh, oh, beyond the toilets or something. I don't know. Down the. <laughs> but he um he actually came on an Ashes tour to watch us, um, and that sort of broke the jinx because he came to the Edge Bastion Test, and I was lucky enough to get a hundred and sixty uh, in that game. So that sort of broke the jinx, and he was, he was at the ground watching. So. But he always used to get obviously very nervous. Um, but you've got two chances, wouldn't you? If I got a duck, then Steve was a chance of getting some runs. So you, know, you, got, you got two for the price of one. But um, yeah, he loved his cricket and he was very passionate about following it. And he used to get a bit upset if, if someone would say something ne- negative about us, which I suppose you know, most fathers do, I guess. It's just an unbelievable era, Mark, where, where you played. I mean, I, there's there's a great scorecard in the tea room at what the formerly known uh, Caring Bar Oval, which is of course now Glen McGrath Oval, uh, the 95 96 first grade final. Just the people who were playing in that game. I mean, Bankstown had all four wars David Freeman, Wayne Holdsworth, and Nathan Bracken, all for Bankstown. Sutherland had Glen McGrath, Stuart McGill, and Stuart Clark. Uh, it's an unbelievable first grade game. I mean, what are your memories of that game? Oh, yeah, they had a good pace attack, didn't they? Decent. Uh, yeah. My memories. Well, I think that was not long after the World Cup uh, in India. And I'd scored a heap of runs there. And obviously, we had a good side leading to that, um, you know, that, that mm. final. But uh, I think me and Stephen failed in both innings as well. Mm. I think Dean and Danny outscored the, the two, mm. you know, the two big guns. I remember mm. that, yeah. Mm. Um, so I didn't make a lot of runs. But, um, yeah, that's, I mean, great quality. Players had a decent bowling attack, didn't they? Clark and uh, McGrath up front. Mm. So. Mm. Um, but I remember the, the younger woman was out scoring the song, or was that? That particular <laughs> final. <laughs> you can score 8,000 test runs but still remember when your brothers get more runs <laughs> in a you. great game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It never goes away. I, I, Junior, I know you're a you're a leg man. I, I've seen you actually wear your Bulldogs jersey on the balcony during an England Ashes series um, back when rugby league was cricket's winter mm-hmm. sport in the, in the days of safety. But um, mm-hmm. just stay with me on this one. Like a few years ago, Queensland half Cooper Cronk was recalling some match-winning moment of his or other and, and his quote was, to be brutally honest, I was in a state of grace at that particular moment. There was no noise in my head whatsoever. In Every sinew of my body came together, one perfect hole. I began to realise that when we're being completely free of our own expectations, the body extends into its natural form without impediment and things just happen. I just wondered if you ever felt the same way about whipping one off your pads. Is that, is that called, called being in the zone, is it? That's it. Like that. <laughs> more more um, complicated way of saying you're in the zone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, well, you just do what's natural, don't you? When you're playing well, you go out there and enjoy yourself um, and it just falls into place. Um but yeah, whipping it off the pads was 
a natural shot for me. It's probably because of our um, backyard. Um, you know, the, the dimensions of our backyard cricket, there was a bit of a slope on the pitch, and, you know, you used to sort of hit with the slope sometimes. So, um, yeah, look, God, I think I could play on the offside as well. Don't like that. Yeah, but, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But, but the leg side was sort of my sort of trademark shot, so it sort of was my strength and weakness. I got out a few times trying to whip one from off peg through the offside, and I through the leg side and I get bowled or LBW so it's, uh, it was sort of a natural shot for me and I guess it, you know, it's, a, it's a good looking shot if you can happen, happen in the middle of the ball not so good if you miss it and you plumb in front of LBW mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. yeah that's the game mate mm-hmm. it's, it's, I actually I, I disagree so it still did look good even if you got out doing yeah. it but anyway that, yeah. and that's a compliment well that's uh, right I mean if, if you can't be a cricket at least you know, look, look like one my, yeah. my mum used to say so yeah if you're going to if you're going to make a low score make a good looking low score yeah well said uh, I'm not sure if you're across Robolinda 2 on YouTube Junior but uh, he's got an archive of just about every cricket match from the 70s or so onwards and mm. one of his most watched clips is of you facing Shane Warren at the SCG mm. 98 mm. Uh, mm. New South Wales Victoria you're dispatching him to all parts of course um, if mm. there was one sort of Robolinda 2 clip you could watch of yourself batting any innings any age any match uh, which innings would it be uh, and why <laughs> Oh, I, I, I do know what you're talking about. I've, I've watched a few, that clip a few times, a little bit and piece of it. But oh, I think if I had to do one, it'd be my test to do in uh, in Adelaide against England. I mean, I I peeled off the hundred and only got a hundred in the session, and um, I think just about without boasting, every ball hit the middle of the bat. So I was mm-hmm. definitely in the zone that day, mm-hmm. that day. And um, so I'd say pure um, ball striking, and obviously first test is a reasonably big occasion for a, for a player. Um, I'd say that'd be the, the one inning that sort of you know, sticks in my mind um, you know, throughout my career. Well, I want to thank you, Mark, for taking this interview because it gave me the opportunity to um, re- to, u- to research on YouTube, you know, Mark Waugh's greatest catches. And my God, there yeah. are some absolute screamers in there. I don't know how you catch a ball and look good while taking a catch, but I want to ask, like, is there <laughs> is there is there one where you think about, you know, late at night, you know, just by yourself in the shower maybe, you know, there's yeah. like, is it Inzamam at Hobart off Warren mm-hmm. or, or um, you know, World Cup final against Pakistan at Lords, second slip, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Chris Cairns yeah. at the Wacker, that's, the that's Wacker, a screamer. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, is, is there yeah. one? Um, well, those are all good catches and obviously the World Cup one mm-hmm. sort of sticks in a lot of people's mind because it's a big occasion. Sure. It's a good catch too. Um, but the best catch I took that I rate was at Headingley off Paul Rifle. I was at second slip and Alex Stewart oh, played yeah, it. It was yeah. quite a Touch full up, yeah. ball and it was sort of a late cut and he hit it real hard and real low to my right and I dived and it just went straight in the middle of my hand. Um, and sometimes it's a bit of a fluke but you don't say that but I, I think that was the best catch I ever took yeah. just because it was so quick and so low and um, yeah, it went, yeah, I think that was the best catch. Was yeah, there's some other ones that look better, you know, when you pull in pull out the big dive and horizontal to the ground. But I think that was technically and as far as difficult, the best best catch I took. Love that. Junior, as we go to air, there's a lot of talk about Will Bukowski's emergence, uh, two enormous scores on the trot. Look, he looks a good. Uh, many forget you scored 7,000 uh, first-class runs before you were called up to the test side. Uh, with your selector's hat on, you know, what, what are you looking for when you're assessing whether or not a young batsman uh, gets a go in, in, in the test side? Is it how he looks? Is, is it the way he scores his runs? How many he scores, uh, and, and would you pick Pekovsky in the eleven? Well, I think all of that. It's, it's obviously, your technique and how you score your runs, and who's it against, all those sorts of things. But I, I would pick him yeah, for sure. I mean, we know he's talented. He's had a few mental health issues, for a couple of seasons, but geez, it'd be hard not to pick him now. He just he's made two hundred and fifty five. He's just about probably to make another double hundred as well. If you're ever going to pick someone and they're going to be in a good headspace mentally, it's been now. So, you know, I just think he's the ideal player. You know, we've got a, a couple of guys in that top six, probably Joe Burns and Matthew Wade, haven't quite, you know, done enough to keep the other players at bay. They've opened the door a bit. So I'd, I'd pick him for sure in the first test and um, probably open the batting with him um, in place of Joe Burns. So I just think he's great talent, got a great simple technique. And he's playing with confidence, so they're all the ingredients you'd, you'd need to pick someone. So, yeah, put him in, I reckon, let him let him go. Well, we saw uh, just recently as well that uh, him and Demarcus Harris, um, you know, passed mm. your, yours and Steve's record partnership, you know, 466 back of the way. Yeah. So, I mean, how many would how many would you you and Steve have scored, you know, had you been playing on Park 25? Oh, well, if they let us keep batting, we probably would have made another 400. <laughs> we would have made 864. <laughs> 
I think Stephen was dirty, actually. That I think it might have been Jeff Lawson declared on us. Um, but, yeah, I mean, ours was against the proper bowling attack at the Wacker. These blokes were playing the club ground, weren't they? <laughs> so they can, no, it was a great achievement. Great achievement. Great achievement by Marcus Harrison. Yeah. And uh, Will. Yeah. 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 You often, it's not very often you get the chance to bat that long together, mm. I suppose, mm. in four-day cricket. So, mm. uh, But good on. By the way, this was supposed to go 10 minutes, this interview. So we nearly done it. Just quietly. Yeah. You, you, you reeled me in there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, gr- good on them for beating us. But I reckon we could have probably got another couple on. Yeah. But, anyway, L- never la- know. Last one, Junior. Uh, there's been a lot written and said about the evolution of Australia's cricket culture. You know, as far as we can see, back in the day, you know, it was about playing hard and aggressive, partying pretty hard, and getting on with it. You know, now blokes play hard, but the, the chat's very PG on the ground. You know, Tim Payne's talking about babysitting, Rishabh Pan stuff, <laughs> his earthing before the game. Half the Aussie team have invested thousands into their teeth, you know, or into Botox. <laughs> yeah, do, do, do you think these are positive developments? <laughs> There's no doubt, the, no doubt the game's changed, and I, you know, I, I think sometimes when I watch any sport these days, it's just a bit sterile. There's so many rules and regulations in place, and you know, there's, you know, there's so many political things you can and can't say. So I think it's, you know, the players are just doing what they're allowed to do. I mean, they'd, they'd probably love to be a bit more loose and a bit freer, like in our era or, or even before my era, but it is what it is. Um, you know, yeah, I'm, I think there's still a bit of room for the larrikin in sport, but. Um, you just got to be so careful. So, yeah, if, you, if you're going to sledge someone, it's got to be, it's got to be sort of very clever. I think Tim Payne's pretty good at it, to be honest. Uh, you know, I think he, he doesn't cross the line, but he's occasionally he'll, he'll have a little chirp there. So, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you're out in the field for six hours. That's the thing with cricket. You're out there for so long. You know, it's hard not to, you know, keep your mouth shut all day, isn't it? So, mm-hmm. I think it's part of the game. It doesn't, doesn't cross the line, but um, you know, the days of, you know. Some of our guys, what we we got up to, you know, they're long gone. It's just the game's changed, um, so you got to just um, you know watch it and and think, um, you know, just appreciate the cricket rather than the, than the chit chat and some of the larrikin behaviour. That's right, Junior. And oh, look, we've overstayed our welcome on the chat. Maybe next time we'll chat, mm. we can talk about what was said in the court and back then. Cause I'll, I'll give a lot. Um, but that's if there is a next time. Thanks so much for, for your time today, mate. Really appreciate right it. Right, guys. No problem. Good on you. Because, of course, none of this would be possible without our best friends, Budgie Smuggler, at budgiesmuggler.com. Uh, now, of course, everyone knows, use the code CHAMP at checkout for free shipping. Christmas is around the corner, and they'll sort you out with all sorts. And the weather's getting hotter now like around the country. I mean, I think most people in Australia have had hot weather for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, but de- well, the heat, wave, so the, heat, the heat wave and the heat yeah. wave, they're two separate things. Mm. Um uh, can I mean it's come a little bit earlier, yeah. Uh, but that's how things are going these days. But that's when you start seeing budget smuggler around, and you know, not without good reason. Mm. Uh, and they can sort you out whatever you want. Yeah, sure, standard smugglers, <laughs> you and you can design them. what you want on them. That's true, you know, as well. Customs. But there's also got some designs of their own as well. They have mm-hmm. their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, words are good today. Mm. Uh, but they come in at the ten and twenty dollar range as well. If you're looking for a little secret Santa gift, yeah, a little Chris Kringle, something, a little Chris Kringle, if you will. Mm. And I know you will. I know I will. Uh, this week, he goes, look, you know, and people are always looking for their design ideas. People always write in to us, as you know, yep. uh, say, you know, they could say whatever they want. They could do an Ask TGC. They could, um, you know, express a view on current affairs yeah. in cricket. Uh, yes. David Warner's injury, et cetera. Yeah. Um, Here's but a they, of my they, friend. They often credit. write in just um, with suggestions for des- – or wanting suggestions for design ideas for mm-hmm. Budgie Smuggle Boys. I don't, know what to th- I don't know what to put on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we often like to go to the news and what's going on. Obviously, the big news in Australia, uh, politically speaking, was um, – Scott Morrison being absolutely trolled and baited by China yep. yesterday. Yeah. Uh, put it, put it as a little meme out, out there from the. Um, yeah. I was going to be careful what we say here because we got hacked the other day. But, um, yeah. Putting their little meme out there and, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the foreign, foreign team at China just, just saying that. A couple of war crimes there, Australia. <laughs> a couple of war crimes there, boys. Essentially, yeah. So well, you maybe just get the Chinese flag. Yeah. As a well, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to think of, uh, some of the biggest you know, sort of examples of trolling in cricket that you might want to you know, stick on your old budget. Well, I for one welcome our new overlords. Yeah. And uh, no doubt, <laughs> I think a couple of our politicians have um, welcomed our new overlords. Yeah, for that's, quite a while. that's true. That's scary, man. They're, yeah, got some stuff. Yeah, yeah spot, there's a bit going on. There's spies here. Fuck yeah, there are. Yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah, maybe on yeah. the studio. I don't know. Yeah. I've got a mate. I think's a spy. Yeah, yeah, it's a separate issue. Yeah, works for the government. Yeah, if I go anywhere, <laughs> well. Use, good. use the code get a few uh, <laughs> to get Pez back. Or Champ. Use the yeah. code Champ at checkout to get Pez back. Any other trolling uh, you can think of in cricket? Yeah. Yeah, I think like a troll, for instance, like now if you're at point or gully and you get thrown the ball, so you know it's a hot yeah. day, yeah. 
you're just getting around the field. You haven't touched the ball in about half an hour, and you think, "Fucking, I just want to. I just want to feel like I'm here. I want to be seen." Mm. You're feeling it cover. The ball is in is in Gully's hands, and he throws it seam up all the yeah. way to mid off. He sees mm. you waving your arms. Mm. Can I can I touch the ball, guys? Can, no, no. I throw it to Robbo at mid off. Mm. That's a troll. Throwing, well, throwing he, over someone's head at cover. You skip it, knee cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're in a game where point asks for the ball on the way back to the bowler, you're playing. Um, a very low level of cricket. Let's say, say that again. Yeah, see, this is even registered with you, um, rightly so. What if? If, if the ball's travelling back to the bowler, yeah. right, it's gone to the keeper, yeah. and Point wants to get in on the oh, action. Oh, fuck off. Exactly. Yeah, I'm insulted to actually walk off the field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had this chat with yeah. my wife. We, we Finally, cricket resumed in Melbourne, and there was a lot of cricket on at the local park, and we mm. took the took the boys up and the, the mm-hmm. dog, and mm. boys came up <laughs> I had to put Flo, the dog, on the lead mm-hmm. uh, because I didn't want him to run on the, the ground. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, just, he can run on the ground. I'm like, no, he can't, Tori. It's, that's cricket ground. She's like, well, and you just went into the standard oh, conversation. That's she, she, she's yeah. like, it's South Park too. I'm like, yeah, yeah. he can't run on the field while cricket's going on anyway. Yeah. I don't know if there's paraphernalia for dogs from budgie smuggling. We've paid our rates. Yeah. I've been trolled by many times by many locals just walking through, like that guy at uh, Balmoral that day. Yeah. His boat shoes were in the fucking AFR or whatever. Oh, his polo, slick back hair, straight from his Hamptons lounge. I'd kill for that confidence just maybe one day. <laughs> just walking through his third slip. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what are you going to do, boys? Good luck on the weekend. Anyway, these are all like all these little images, little flashpoints right. could be and used themes. As, yeah, little motifs. themes. Motifs, if you will. And I will. Um, where can we find this, Pez? BudgieSmuggler.com And our dear friends are back this week, he goes. They come around once a month and we've enjoyed uh, spruiking them. And you know why? Because as with Budgie Smuggler, we are believers in these products. We only spruik products we believe in. (laughs) Famous last words. Yeah. Uh, But this is true. This is true gear. Well, if I wouldn't believe in this product, I'd be... I'm taking my life my own hands, basically. Good point. Who are we talking about, Epez? We're talking about Manscaped. We're talking about Manscaped. Yeah. Great friends of our show. Yes, they have been very good friends. Who, so much so they keep sending us merch. And yeah. now I have like I got too many fucking I got too many manscapes. There's no house. excuse for you not to be scaped. Yes, that's true. Mm, as a man. That's right. Uh they are, back home the, on the weekend. Let me tell you, I was aerodynamic. We're talking in the past about the lawnmower 3.0. That'll, we have just, in the that'll past. sort you out around yeah. the you know, with your hair around the genital area. Yes. You know? And let's face it, no one wants to talk about it, but everyone wants it scaped. What else are you gonna do? Take to it with some fucking scissors. Yeah. They might even be from your kitchen or something. Gotta tell you, I mean, it's gotta disgusting. Gotta tell you lads out there. <laughs> it is. What? Do you, but what other choices have we had in the past as men around that? It's sort of like, how do you get it done? What are you in the shower? What are you cleaning up your hair after that? Manscaped. Yeah. There's a clipper for it. Yeah. That's in your lawnmower 3.0. But guess what? They've got the performance package now. That's thrown in an ear and nose hair trimmer. What's that called, Pez? Performance package. I think it's <laughs> called. It's called the weed whacker. Of course. It's called the weed whacker. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, like lots of talk about Pfizer Man, and uh, get, Moderna, yeah, whatever yeah, the other yeah, one is, yeah, the uh, Oxford chart, yeah, you know, the, vac- yeah. the vaccine to rid, the, to rid the, the, the world of a pandemic. Yeah. Yes, that's right, of the, of the, of the curse of the penguin, mm, mm. Uh, as a friend of Batuta once uh, coined it. Um, and so people are out there, you know, summer's around the corner here, people are out again, they're meeting, they're yeah. meeting in bars, yeah, they're, greeting. they're meeting in parks, they're reverse yeah. dogging, Yeah, you know? And so you've got to be prepared for that stuff. Yeah. Christmas is here. It's getting hotter. You I can't be carrying excess hair around either. I've got to tell you, mate, like yeah, this yeah. is not just this, – this shouldn't just be a private purchase for yeah. the man. I think, mate, you know, many females listen to this show and they've got, mm. a, little, they've got a special someone in their life. I think that's a great Same present. Thing about I think it's a great present. Yeah, and so you've got the ear, ear and nose uh, hair trimmer. Yeah. Uh, as a man who is, like all of us, uh, ageing, getting older, you start sure. getting hair in a few of those unwanted places. Mm. And, again, I found their weed whacker to be absolutely uh, superb. Yeah. In terms of getting rid of that ear and nose hair, which is yeah. something that I experienced. Now, they can use the code TGC at checkout and they get 20% mm. off. They can also use the vanity URL. Yes, the vanity URL. Manscaped.com slash grade cricketer. Mm. If that doesn't work, try the grade cricketer. <laughs> or just use TGC at checkout. Or use TGC at checkout. Oh, they've just got instructions for us. I'm just saying, whichever way you go on their website, just chuck in TGC or use that vanity URL, you're going to get 20% off. Manscaped, making your hair look better. That's not their tagline, that's ours. <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't a great. Yeah. Pez, hashtag ice TGC, we're here. Wonderful to speak to Mark War. A white whale, he's in the aquarium. Yeah, some people suggested he wasn't a white whale. I believe you me, he was. He was a white whale. 
Oh, it was yeah. suggested it was a, sort of a tier two. It's like, mm. in mm. fact, I saw in the comments people were like, now get Steve. It was like, mm, mm. sorry, sweetie, yeah. done that twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get well soon. Know. Yeah, now get Steve. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's just bugs. Um. Oh yeah, white whale, like one of my heroes, and would have been yours as well, I'm sure. Oh my, my favorite. Um, Your hero of all yeah. time. Okay, yeah. Ponting was mine. Yeah. Fair enough. Before Bradman, <laughs> it was good stick. Gary Bartley writes in. Dear Higgy Smalls and P-Unit, I'm a cricket tragic pom in my early 30s and I need some psychological help. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that I don't know, always start just, the same? Yeah. <laughs> in my mid-teens, I played for two cricket teams. The first was my school team, who were beyond hopeless and made up of the kids who couldn't get into the other sports teams. Oh. Since I knew which end of the bat to hold and, the, and what the LBW law was, I was something of a big fish in this admittedly tiny pond. I opened the batting and averaged well south of 20. We got tanked every week, but it didn't matter. We had fun. Mm. The other team I played for was a Sunday league side. I was invited to turn up uh, for training by a friend of my dad's who heard that I played a bit of cricket. In this slightly larger pond, I was quickly outed as the worst player they'd ever seen and was regularly outed whilst being too young and naive to really understand what was happening. I never got selected in this team and on more than one occasion turned up to midweek nets to find that an away match had been arranged and they had neglected to tell me. Cue awkward drives home with my dad. Mm. My other abiding memory of training is when the senior team coach turned up and watched me bowl some floaty pies to another lad and get pumped back over my head over and over again to a chorus of giggles. The coach stopped me and told me that I had a nice off spinners action and to try rolling my fingers over. He then walked off and didn't bother watching the results. <laughs> they were the same. Hmm. I later learned that his advice was just code for, you're fucking chucking it, mate. Hmm. During the second season... In this ritual humiliation, my school team was drawn in the local cup competition against a school where most of my club team players went. I knew that most of them would be playing and I seized upon the opportunity to prove to them that I wasn't completely useless. I opened the batting as per and quickly found a pretty good rhythm. I was hitting the ball cleanly and moved to a chanceless 20-odd, mm. even managing to find a few boundaries. Mm. I was buzzing and starting to prove my doubters wrong. It was then that I confidently pushed one of my club team's quicks into the offside and set off for a quick single, loudly calling yes as I went. I got over halfway down before realising that the lad at the other end hadn't moved. I looked him dead in the eyes mm. and he just continued to obliviously lean on his bat. Instead of jogging on and running him out, I panicked and tried to get back to the striker's end and was run out on a marginal call by my own school's PE teacher. Cue chorus of laughs from the other team, acute embarrassment and another heavy defeat. Fast forward nearly 20 years, I have a solid job in the NHS with a gorgeous long-term partner and two great kids. The lad who ran me out works in the pub near where I work. He's a decent bloke. He serves me drinks on a Friday after work and still lives with his parents. I've not played cricket since school and have no intention of ever playing again. My question is, why do I hate him? Why do I hate the nice guy who just happens to be crap at cricket and not, and not at all the slightly more talented assholes on the other team? You're shamefully Gary. P.S. Keep up the good work with the pod. Big fan. Gary, um, firstly, yours shamefully is a wonderful way to win these letters and almost kind of applies to all of them. In fact, almost applies to this entire operation. Um, yeah. Yours shamefully. Thanks also for your work at the NHS. Yeah, brother. yeah. Brother. Yeah. Uh, Round of well, applause. I want to answer your question. I want to answer it straight, Gary. Mm. You hate this bloke because he denied you the chance to get one over your slightly more talented arsehole, you know, um, arsehole teammates. Yeah. You know, whereas you already knew, you and you're wondering why do I not like you know hate them more? You already knew they were assholes, these mm, blokes. Mm, you knew that. Mm. You didn't know that the pub guy, the eventual pub guy, would betray you like this. Mm. When you talk about leaning on the bat and him looking you dead in the eyes dead or with eyes. dead eyes, yeah, we all know what you mean. You know, like I'm imagining he's got one leg crossed over the other, resting on his bat like Mark Taylor. You know, mm. at the non-striker's <laughs> end, <laughs> pretty quick single eras. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, while he might have – like he may have been, you know, just bad at cricket, like it's the manner of just waiting there that grates. For example, let's say in the same situation, pub guy, eventual pub guy, <laughs> takes yeah. off. He has a crack at the single and, he, and maybe he hesitates or he doesn't know, but he, he's at least responded to your call. Mm -hmm. He's acknowledged that this is what you want to do, pushing mm -hmm. one into the offside. Now, I'm presuming it's in front of the wicket. The change of things if it wasn't. Oh, yeah. Um, but you've made a call. Yeah, you've made a call. 
And it's it's the it's just the sheer disrespect and disregard mm. of no response. He's oblivious. Your, your action has meant absolutely nothing to mm. him. Maybe low IQ from him. I, I don't know. Off mm. with the pixies. Mm. Um, you know, but if he take, tries to take off in good faith, you know, you appreciate his intent. <laughs> it's the way he happily sacrificed you and yeah. your dignity. So yeah. brutal. So dead-eyed, mm-hmm. you know. You, you're right to have mixed negative feelings about him. Yeah. Perhaps it's salvageable over a beer, though, and he may say, I have no recollection of that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it looks as though you're doing quite well anyway. He may say, I, I get this all the time, I'm mistaken for someone else. <laughs> he may say, mate, there's no fucking run in it. <laughs> Get back in your fucking crease, champ. You might say he, you may, he, may he may say, say that. that. He may that, say that. But that, that's my. That's why I think Gary hates him. Yeah, he, the, yeah. The manner of not he responding. Wa- to he the wanted single. to be seen. That, that's what all these he, questions. Are. I wanted to be I seen. Want to be seen. I want to be seen. Recognize me. Love me, yeah. daddy. If they hesitate, mix up, and oh, you know that you're a bit of a goose. Step here and there. Gary already got the recognition. In NHS, they're out in the streets. They're clapping. But that's not what he wants. And we've de- we've dealt with this on other shows. You can mm. get, you could you could solve COVID if you don't get that cricket recognition. Mm. That's going to burn forever if that's your thing, mm. you know? Especially if they got non strikers and was behind the umpire. Yeah. It was real deep in his crease. And then went back up. <laughs> so he turned his back on him. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ultimate disrespect. Practicing his forward turned defense. Turned his back on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah shadow back. Yeah. <laughs> With a lot to say, mate. The last ball he over, he just didn't want to run. Yes. Oh, mm. yeah, go on then. Anonymous writes in. Might need some help with you. Dear H- Higgs Bossen. Higgs boson. Higgs boson. It's the it's the particle they used. Fuck, what was that about? I get it all the time. Uh, Higgs boson was the. Um, this is science stuff. Yeah, it's the, uh. the, the the particle they found to prove gravity or some shit. Wow. Oh, fuck. Um, it was quite a recent discovery. Okay. Um, now normal. stay with me because I've got the internet. Normal pod. Um, Let's just wait. Higgs yeah, boson. Higgs boson. Okay, the Higgs boson particles like the photon that do not interact with it are left with no mass at all. Oh, okay. Uh, it's an elementary particle in the standard model of particle physics produced yeah. by the quantum excitation of the Higgs field, yep. one of the fields in particle physics theory. So that clears that up. Yep. Okay. So you're a little particle there. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Higgs boson and Perlin Meyer flask. Oh, it was called the God particle, the Higgs boson. <laughs> What's a Perlin Meyer flask? Oh, fuck me. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's just see. You know, people are waiting now. Perlin-Meyer flask, well, an Erlenmeyer flask, that's probably is, also known as a conical flask uh, or a titration flask, titration, mm-hmm. is a type of laboratory flask which features a flat bottom, a conical mm. body, and a cylindrical neck. Yeah, that's me. Mm. Um, anyway, this question involves my place of employment, so please leave this as anonymous. I write today in the hope that, once again, the answer to one of life's great conundrums can be found in the game of cricket, mm-hmm. a game that has been around for so long, the earliest evidence of the existing of, its, of, of the existence, is from a court case in the late 16th century England from the testimony of a 59-year-old coroner, John Derrick, who gave witness that, and this is the quote, being a scholar in the free school of Guildford He and diverse of his fellows did run and play there at Cricket and other <laughs> plays. <laughs> Fuck, it's medieval shit. No, really. The question is about my project manager and my place of employment <laughs> and his constant attempts at alpha type behavior. Uh-huh. Every time he walks into the room, he greets us with a loud, what are yous doing? Or what the fuck is going on here? This in itself is reasonably innocuous. However, it gets worse. He constantly looks over my shoulder at whatever I'm working on, provides unhelpful commentary purely for entertainment purposes and dominates conversations. But wait, there's more. All of this would be perfectly fine for me and I'm more than happy to go along with his hashtag bans as I've told him to fuck off more than once. Much to his amusement. The bit that really gets to me is his choice of greeting reserved only for me. G'day, big fella. Mm. For reference, I'm 30 years old, 6 foot 3 and 100 kilograms. Brackets 104, lockdown. <laughs> so he's around it down there as well, yeah. To my mind, big fella is something dads say to kids slash teenagers, and I just can't seem to get past this. The project manager is in his late 30s and has kids of his own, so I can only presume it's a habit he's picked up and he's now getting some mileage out of in the workplace. Mm. In light of recent trends towards everything in life being a dichotomy, I feel I have two options. Do I, A, reciprocate his usage of big fella with excessive and gratuitous champing in an attempt to show my distaste in a light-hearted but still serious way? B, ignore and accept my lot in life and move on from this childish annoyance I've created for myself, 
realising that all in all, my project manager is a pretty darn good bloke and I should be grateful. Thoughts? Anonymous. Well, I wouldn't bother with BPEZ because, I mean, this is the dog-eat-dog world of mm. project management, which I presume involves some sort of construction work. This is the most manliest men environment that you could mm. get. It with could be anything with project manager. It could be across anything. In my mind, it was construction, but maybe it's because well, so is, it could be engineering. There's a lot of science at the top of the at the intro as well. You mean, gotta, you gotta okay, okay. I'm revealing. I'm handing him my I'm handing him my man card here because, like, engineering and construction, I know they're different things. But I, in my in my world of you know creativity and tweets, oh, oh. that that engineering and construction are um, buggy. Well, no, I suppose they just go a bit more hand in hand. Like, if you're engineering something, mm. am I wrong in saying that? Oh, no, I think that I think the stats would bear that out. It's probably a lot of efforts out there to ensure there are more women in those fields. We were talking about this yesterday. Like um, now, I think about it. Of like, oh, I'm not practical. I'm not a practical person. I can't build shit. No, you're not. I'm not fucking. You know, if I need a man around the house. Basically, mm. if something needs to get done, I'm I'm going to the air tasker yeah. and getting the man in the house. Man, amen. I'm exactly the same. Yeah, um, I'll get the Wi-Fi going. Oh yeah. There's never any cred given to that. Huh. Get the next door neighbour to come do no. a bit of guttering around the house. Yeah. And I was like, you know, yeah. Mrs. Can't get the internet going. Who, yeah. who sorts that out? Why don't I get man cred for that? What's going on with the printer? Get me in. Exactly. Get me in. You know, TV's not working. Bang. <laughs> fucking Matrix. <laughs> Try to have, help, help. I'm fucking goodwill hunting. Help me work out with this tweet. I think instead of champing yep. um, to answer Anonymous' question, I'd go with... Um, here he is. It's the great man. Great man, yeah. Um, yeah as a yeah. that's a subtle, gateway. Subtle. That's a gateway into the champ if required. Yeah. I mean, it's more subtle, and I think he'll, I think he, I think he'll think that he's being called a great man. You know, not to be confused, obviously. Alexander. But he'll wonder about it. He'll he'll, he'll he'll still give it a double take. But hmm, what's that? That's incongruous. To well, he also might think he's been referred to as Alexander the Great, um, who obviously spread great culture in the largest empire in the history of the world. He might think that. But your colleagues will know. <laughs> Your colleagues will know that you're subtly champing him. You're just slipping it in there. Here he is. Hey, it's a great man. Yeah, it's a great man. Ah, oh, of course. Yes. I'm being referred to as Alexander the Great. <laughs> <laughs> spread, spread great culture. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Did I? He might. Did a BMI calculator. Did you, mate? On um, sorry, anonymous here. He's, his BMI is not that bad at that height. Not great, but it's not that bad. I'm just thinking about. Oh, it. I thought you <laughs> fucking looked him up. He gave the stats. Yeah, yeah. The stats. I, so I jumped on. I jumped on the BMI calculator. Yeah, it's not okay. that bad. Um, no, nah, six three and a hundred. Six, 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 six three and a buck. Yeah, 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 and a, yeah, buck, a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> buck, buck four. <laughs> but, <laughs> but big fella is big fella is in the yeah. family of condescending language where champ sits as sovereign, obviously. As champ, sovereign, champ, champ is emperor. Yes, of that. And then there's the a emperor. family underneath. It's yes. a, it's an arrow. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, so at six six foot three, anonymous is always going to be big. So he's always going to be able to lean on, like you know, being like, oh, look, I'm I'm big, mm. but I'd say yeah, like he needs to start a passive language war with his boss. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. neither of them acknowledge it, but both know what's going on, mm -hmm. but not quite know what's going on. As in, you know, he called me great man. Is he sledging me or is he calling me Alexander yeah, 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 the Great? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, I was going to say the staples will work well, you know, maybe not champ, but maybe champion here and there, you know, yeah. bud, chief, matey. Tough mate, one. Matey. Matey. Yeah, tough one for your boss, though, isn't it? Tough one to call your boss champ. I think you're going to slip into some, like, some incongruous, like, just under the radar. That's the way you say it as well. Yeah, I guess yeah, it is. That, is that, there's, there's a lot in it. Joe Costa writes in, Pez, he says, Dear he Gigolo. Um, he gigolo, I presume, and the lad. Boys! <laughs> it's not even in the letter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last week, all my mates were sitting around the table reminiscing on our year 12 first 11 season. The topic moved to... The topic moved to worst net bowler. One of my oldest and dearest friends who played twos attempted to contribute pleasantly to the, to the discussion. Without moving an inch of my face or turning <laughs> my body to look at my mate, I snapped. I don't remember bowling at you. Ones didn't practice on Astro. My mates were in hysterics. When I snapped out of my trance and came to my senses, I felt terrible. I could see the pain in my best friend's eyes. Great cricket has fucked me. At this rate, <laughs> how long do I have until I have pissed away all friendships? and spend my time mowing outfields with my only companion, a little fluffy dog. I'm 20. On another note, are you guys collecting royalties on Sextillion's seventh power as it is clearly a ripoff of Chop King Cologne? Love the content, guys. Joe. 
Uh, yeah, Joe, unfortunately, it'll never go away. Uh, that will remain forever as a result of your time mm-hmm. uh, playing at that level. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a few ways you can go about it. Yeah, like mm-hmm. if you want to get rid of it, you need to admit you have a problem, you're powerless to the addiction and go from there. Yeah. But but also understand, you know, you're not your thoughts. We've talked about that before. You're not your thoughts just because they come into your head and you can say it. doesn't mean that's who you are, you know. Like Headspace is a good app yeah. for meditation. Yeah. If you're just a little bit of mindfulness of what's jumping through sure. your head, you know, let the thought come, recognise it, mm-hmm. see it. Let it drift away. Mm-hmm. Let it drift away on the water there. Um, but yeah, some you know, of course, you've got you've got to guard against those times when you black out and um, say these heinous things to people. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And and it's bad. He goes and I. I mean, mate, our our whole uh, conversational like culture away from this podcast is just talking like that to each other. But yeah. it, it goes really far. Like yeah. like you know, I'll give you you know, you'll do something nice. Like you open the door for me or something. Like oh, you open the door for me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, you know, yeah. like oh, okay, I'm going through that. You've done, you've done that for me. Thank you. Yeah. You know, yeah, or yeah. like the uh, earlier today, I, yeah. I had a sandwich in your house, and you said, oh, "Do you want a plate?" I'm like, "Yeah, you could get that plate. Bring it over. Yeah, bring yeah. that plate over to me. Yeah, yeah there bring it here. Bring, bring, bring it here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's all healthy stuff. Yeah, really good. Pez, this is another instalment. I thought of um, here's what I'm really communicating. Yes. Um, and what um, Joe is really communicating is disdain for your friend attempting to attach himself to your success and abilities. Um, I feel like it's a, it's a reason why like professional cricketers don't like, they don't like the clubbies. They don't like the journalists telling him, here's why you're shit. Here's what you've done wrong. Here's what you should have done. Cause they're like, Hey, you can't fucking catch. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Do the catch test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Quick. Uh, uh, uh. Catch it. You remember, um, when Chris Rock was on, um, triple J breakfast and he was talking to Matt O'Kine yes. and then, um, um, he was uh, uh, Chris Rock asked Matt O'Kine if um, if he if Thought his stand up was any good, yeah. and and Matt said, "Yeah, I'm really good." And um, Chris Rock's reply was, "I play basketball. When I say Jordan, I, say, I don't say I can play." <laughs> <laughs> and then Chris like Rock this. then Chris Rock tells the producer to like pull up his stand up and he's watching it, and like and then Chris Rock's reaction to it was, um, "Oh, it's cute." Harsh, one yeah. of the all time like yeah, just savage alpha. savage alpha burns yeah. yeah and it's just like you know that's what so his friend is trying to attach himself to joe's you know once and he's like mm. mate you weren't good enough mm. i don't remember you being part of this i like that he it was really involuntary though he just blacked out well, and just yeah. smashed him to the yeah. amusement of his friends he's like oh, i don't even want to be this person but it's too easy he's 20 and he says great cricket's fucked him he's playing the school first 11 yeah. so he's played you're, one you're, he's played one or two years you're of great done cricket. by 20 21 done. Cooked. great cricket you're yeah. you're mentally done. game over man gone yeah. It's like exposure to the sun. You let it go 15 minutes, 20, you're gone. Certain type of pigment in your skin. Yeah. Same with certain brains in grade cricket. Yeah. You know? It's like screen time for kids. Grade cricket is your brain. They still trauma. haven't done all the reports into it, but the, the early signs that it's not good for you. Mm. There's going to be government ads this year instead of yeah, tanning your skin cells and trauma. Grade cricket is your brain in trauma. That's what they're going to say this year. You'll hear that on the ads. Mm. This is a celebration of that as we keep, it's a getting, celebration. As we keep getting asked to. It's a celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure you celebrate us. Um, yeah. Thank you very much to Mark Junior Wall for joining the show. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you to Sam Perry. It's nice. Thank you to everyone out there listening. A little snippet for you, you Patreon subscribers on Thursday. And then hashtag ask, to, ask <laughs> TGC Fridays. Fuck. Just a little doze off. Falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, see you guys next week. What do you do for work?